that's interesting. Didn't that pull request? Yeah, there's the draft. So I'm, oh, and there we go. It's like, why is that still there? That should auto go away. Okay, so I'm already starting to feel that there's like, like some stuff I wanna do in terms of uh, code checking and uh, stuff now that I'm actually like doing pull requests and not just pu pushing everything directly to main. The project is maturing. Okay, so a couple of things that I've identified as kind of next steps to do. One I, I've been working on off stream. Uh, like I said, it's kind of at the boring part where I just need to do some testing and figure out uh, what the diff is between one thing that was working and one that was not um, in terms of like importing into my video, video editor. Uh, number five there, scan for produced videos for episodes in sidebar on the episode list page. So the idea here is that like assume the part that I'm skipping over right now, like getting the video metadata, like the episodes into the video editor. The point of that is to have resolve to render out the final video and then get that final video back into this tool. Instead of using resolve to upload to YouTube, I uh, have this tool, Loaming Telegram, do that. And the reason for that is I should have a bunch of metadata in here that will be useful for generating the video description, setting settings that I want to set on the video, um, which is number six, uh, setting up a, a way to select videos and uh, queue them up for upload to YouTube from the tool, right? So from this, from this UI, selecting multiple episodes and being like, uh, upload to YouTube. And then in the background, it would do that is number six. Number two, we've already started working on with the list view uh, for the episode CRUD UI. So I, that is a thing that needs to continue. Like the episodes need to be editable. Uh, I do have a create UI, so I can like, I can create a title, um, but ex expanding on that is also another thing. Um, and probably leveraging the uh, timeline that we've already built to probably show information about the episode might be good in that UI somewhere. Uh, number four, we already talked about. Um, number three, uh, so the numbers are just like the order that I took these two items and made, made them into issues that show up uh, over here in the issues for the project itself, for the for the repo. Uh, number three, include transcript and Twitch chat as subtitle tracks for import into DaVinci Resolve. So a thing that we haven't done yet, but would be really cool to do is to get a hold of, well, we have the transcript, uh, but we don't have Twitch chat save for the stream. Um, now, I don't know if there is a way after the fact, I mean, the Twitch has the data, right? Because if you go watch a VOD, you will see in the chat, the chat at the time of the VOD, right? So Twitch must be saving it. I don't know if their API provides a way to retrieve that. That could be that could be a fun little thing that we could do uh, with the time we have left today. That sounds very ominous saying it like that. Um, what do, what do we got in terms of Twitch APIs? Uh, the alternative would be instead of pulling the data after the fact, we could try to uh, a thing that I want to do is I want to make a Twitch bot for like integrating this tool directly into Twitch chat. Uh, during the stream. So if we couldn't get the chat after the fact, we could do it going forward by having a bot in the stream capturing chat to record it into the tool. Um, so get chat settings. Send sh okay, so these are all things that we can do. Uh, get, get chatters, get badges, 
Send a chat message. Create clip, get clips, get con what is a conduit? Conduits, uh, transport types of wrapper that separates your subscriptions from the underlying transport and load, balances notifications across shards. Interesting. So this is where I probably need to read like some more foundational docs. Um, but whatever. Get channel stream schedule. Update channel screen, stream schedule. Chat and chatbots. Send and receive messages. Display a list of videos. Getting videos by ID. Data, thumbnail, viewable, muted segments. So it's just like description metadata. Get channel information, chat. It's all the chat stuff. Um, what does get chatters look like? I mean, it says get the list of users that are connected to the broadcast ch chat session. Okay. Can we look at. Is there stuff about. There's videos. Get videos. We were already looking at that. Like you could imagine if there's an API to do this, it would revolve around information about the VOD. Maybe there's not a way of doing this. Gets information about one or more published videos. Video by ID, filter, and there's request parameters. Type, okay, VODs. And then we have response body, uh, duration, type, language, viewable, view count, thumbnail, published. So nothing about the chat. Okay. So I'm I'm gonna say for now it seems like it's not possible to get the uh, chat from a video in the past. So if we want to accomplish uh, number three here, what we probably need to do is make a bot that will sit in this channel and uh, just record the chat messages. Uh, so let's think about that. How would we do that? So we would probably create a new service. I've been threatened. <laughs> I've been mentioning, uh, maybe threatening to maybe look at using Elixir. And uh, yeah, that was the suggestion in the coding channel. Uh, the thing I was saying, what about a Twitch bot run with Elixir? Um, so we could do that. And then the idea would be that this bot would run as part of our, our Docker services in here. <laughs> Brainless is happy about that. Um, yeah, yeah. And then it would uh, write somewhere. We would both be learning, right. Maybe we could just have it write to, well, we could either have it write to, hmm. Like for my use case, because this is not like a multi-channel thing, um, it would be easier. What would be easier? I don't know. 
let's um let's think about what the where the data is going to go the data flow right so th the end goal here is to be able to relate um an episode right a section of a video back to the stream and the period of time in which the chat messages were happening right to correlate them um Hmm. Now, there's something to be said about having the bot interact with Redis. Right, because then we could have something where, like we could interact. I did not get the end goal. So the end goal, the end goal would be, um, well, I think the bot could potentially do multiple things, but the specific use case here would be capturing, right? So in the UI, in, in the tool, we have a stream record, right? So here's the stream from the 24th. Oh, that's broken. Why is, huh, that's odd. Might be a bug that sometimes happens. Um, so we have like this tab for the transcript. So this is basically a recording a, well, it is a speech to text of everything that I said during the stream. What if we had another tab that was all the chat messages during the stream? Um, I think Firefox is not responding, but I also think that the, the idea behind this was that we would um, be able to use that data as part of like our AI analysis, like looking for highlights and um, clip things and things that are interesting for the purposes of creating uh, videos for YouTube from the string. I used to save all the chat messages when I did my bot. I do think there is a restriction on uh, tenure of messages. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you mean by tenure of messages? What does that mean? All right, so there's all section here about chat chat bots. After connecting the server, first messages that all bots must see, uh, send are the pass and nick messages on how long you can store chat messages for. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Um, Verified bots. Uh, getting started. Do they have a rules or terms of service? Change log, product life cycle, concepts. Terms of service. Twitch developer services agreement. This, this is gonna make for some exciting content here. Uh, <laughs> limitations. You will not use the program materials with any software or other materials subject to licenses or restrictions. 
that when combined with products of the app, with credit to the app. That, that is, that is interest. I don't think that's possible, but whatever, I'm not a lawyer. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Ownership. Uh -huh. Developer accounts, keys, rate limits, security measures, auditing and monitoring. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Data policy. Twitch data may not be used for purposes other than. User content. Oh, this this one was interesting. I think there may be some gotchas here. Uh, let's see. Period. Professional. Where is the necessary process transactions? Limit purpose which end users give permission. Twitch data. End user browser. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, sold, licensed, monetized, distributed, sure. Third parties, affiliates. Uh huh, uh huh. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, eight user content. Is there an eight? Eight dots. One match. Nope. User content. Oh, it's a different. Yeah, that's the that's the general terms of service. I was looking at the developer one. Maybe that one. Not reading every single word. Uh huh. Not doing that. Not doing that. Not doing that. Not doing that. There's no time limit there. Hmm. Do not store copies of Twitch content or program materials. Written permission, control rights associated content, cache such permission only for 24 hour time period. What is Twitch content? Definitions, Twitch content. User content, third-party content, collectively defined in Twitch's terms of service, including with limitation, messages, materials, data, information, text, music, sound. Yeah. Uh huh. Did we define user content here? I like an initial reading would suggest that that is talking about like chat messages, perhaps, which would suggest we would only be able to retain it for. Uh, 24 hours? Let's take a look at that other link that Bringly sent. So maybe we uh, are not allowed to do this. Eight, user content. Yeah. So this is talking about, um, at least this appears to be framed in terms of addressing the person who is sending the chat message or streaming. Yeah, 
giving Twitch the right to distribute that. And then, yeah, you're responsible for that. It's at your own risk. Certain things are not... Uh, da, 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 da. Yep. Things, branded content, prohibited content, conduct. Yeah, send junk email to spam users to switch service. Uh huh. Move circumvent, save all the up. Nope. Reverse engineer, modify translate. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Anyway, I think the other one basically says that we can't do the thing that I was kind of intending to do unless we only retained the data for 24 hours or less, which could still be feasible, right? Where we um, ingest the data during the stream and then do analysis of it, driving some information and then saving that derived information and not the chat messages themselves. So I think that's something I'll maybe come back to um, I mean, to be fair, this says just include, yeah, I guess, well, that's interesting because it's not really, here's the thing, like, yeah, maybe, but so think about this, right? So the Twitch chat, I know it's not just me, like everyone that I see that puts their VODs on YouTube most of those people will have Twitch chat in the video, like I do, like right, right here. And so that, like the interpretation that I just made of the text would seem to preclude the possibility of doing that. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, did I have a card here for creating a Twitch bot? I think I did, like a separate one for that. Integrate with OBS, import Twitch stream info and stats into stream record. This one I wanna do as well. Um, move that up. Somewhere right here. Uh, Multi-channel bot with user, oh yeah. This was a separate thing. I really, um, it was kind of cool. I'm not sure how feasible this would be now. Maybe still a little bit, but Foxy Blue did a giveaway uh, in February, where if you used her animated emotes in certain channels, you would get points or you would get uh, entries into the giveaway, something like that. So you could automate something like that by just having a bot that sits in the, the target channels. So I was thinking of implementing something like that. Um, I don't think I have a card for just like doing a Twitch bot. That might be a good start. Make a simple Twitch uh, chat bot. There we go. Yeah. You had to be, it had to be in certain channels, like in the uh, channels of people that were subbed, subbed to, uh, to Foxy during that, to, at the cutoff point, who were streamers specifically. Somewhere in there. <laughs> No, it was good. I mean, I think her objective was right to get people uh, to go, you know, engage in, you know, some, some of those uh, smaller streamers and go uh, say hello and spread the love, you know? So we can make a chat bot that kind of uh, helps keep track of that sort of thing. And, uh, I don't know. I mean, this tool is a place that that could live. 
it's not really the focus that uh, you know. It's not. It wasn't the thing that this tool was originally uh, intended to do, but it just keeps on growing larger and larger in scope. Um, okay, so went down a little bit of a rabbit hole there. Uh, so what to do then? Restore the message and invest with the TL twenty four hours. Yeah, could do that. Could do that. Let's, uh, do we want to just give it a go? Let's, let's, um, let's do this. Where did that card go? Uh, let's just put it at the top. Let's just, we're, we're not, we're not going to get, I don't know if we'll even connect to Redis today, but we'll just, let's, let's just work on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, you're more than welcome to. Um, like, I believe the repo is forkable. So, like, you could fork and uh, open a PR. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can't because this is my repo, but you, so anyone else could create a fork and then do a pull request into it. So that's an option. Uh, so, let's get set up with Elixir. Mmm. Two eyes. Uh, install. Windows. Download and run the Erlang installer. And then download and run the Elixir installer, or use Chocolatey. Let's try Choco. Oh, what is ASDF? Also, this is the wrong, this is the wrong place for the t kind of terminal I want. Also, uh, oh, we're in uh, WSL, so actually, I want like the Ubuntu. Is this actually gonna work? ASDF. Uh, uh huh. One tool, get started. Uh, aptitude? Uh, I'm pretty sure I have those things. ASDF is an application which handles different versions of different languages, so you can switch among them. Okay, well, let's give it a shot. I suspect that um, just running apt for uh, for Elixir is not going to give good results. Let's see if I okay, I didn't typo that. That's good. And all that stuff was already installed, so that's good. And then our favorite thing to do, uh, okay, we're just gonna get clone into a home directory. Seems good. Okay, in bash RC. Uh, not what I wanted to do. Yep, bye. Uh, all right. Tilde is in a different place. It's Bash. that should have done it completions must be configured by adding the following I guess we could do that too okay and then 
that's it. Can we just ASDF install Elixir latest? Yeah, if... Uh, yeah? Yeah, if the file exists, then source it. Sure. Well, it should be fine. How do we how do we use ASDF to uh, actually install? Do we need a plugin? I guess I could just you know what I could do. What key am I? Oh, control, huh? Interesting. Uh, ASDF. Okay. Install and thing. List, ASDF list does install, a list installed versions of packages. things. Oh, you have a link. Awesome. Uh... All right. Erlang makes sense. Do we need a plugin to do... Yeah, it looks like it. I think I was I was on the right track here though. Like is there Erlang in this list? Does that work? Uh yeah. Erlang plugin and Elixir plugin. Unknown command, ASD of, okay, ASD. I could just actually look at this page that you sent me. I actually pay attention to what it's telling me to do. Plug in add. Plug in add. Plug in add. Uh, and then that URL. Is that right? Uh, Oh, now we need the word Erlang. Hey, it did a thing. All right. And then is there one for Elixir too? Might as well do that as well. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna copy it from the page you sent this time. Ta-da. Uh, and then, what does this do? ASDF list all Erlang. Are we are we from smallest to greatest? So up to twenty seven RC one. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that article is a little older now at this point. <laughs> Can we do twenty six? Uh. And then we just say ASDF install and Erlang in the version number, right? So the question is, what's the current version of Elixir and what version of Erlang does it need? Go, just go with latest? Well, I don't know. I wanna, I wanna do the right thing. Uh, so, 
Yeah, I think you can do latest, but I don't know if the latest version of Elixir needs the latest version of Erlang. Oh, there is an Elixir base container. That's good. Uh, so, Elixir 1.16 released this news. Yeah, 1.16. What version of Erlang does it need? Full release notes. Uh, I don't know. Let's just ASDF install Erlang latest. Something's happening. Looks like it's installing something 26. Uh, configure failed. Curses. Ubuntu uh, Erlang 26. What, what? Could be build utils. Uh, let's see. Building installation instructions. In curses, term cap, or term lib. Yeah, build essential, maybe. I felt like I've already done that once in this environment. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 make GCC, etc. cetera. But uh, it, something about incurses. No curses library functions. Uh, so we need like in curses or term cap or term lib uh, for Ubuntu. Uh, here's a search. Maybe just like, really? Why? Lib in curses dev? In curses five. What version of Ubuntu am I on? Uh, why doesn't control? Okay. Yeah, Microsoft standard Linux. Yeah, I mean, that is sort of what I'm doing. Um, yeah, sudo. Did I already copy? I mean, this is not gonna work. Nope. Um, I did see like a lib. Curses Dev, I think. Aha. See if that makes it happy. Aha, Lib in Curses Five Dev. If it if it's going to the trouble. of like looking for things? Why doesn't it just install them? All oh, right, because I'm not running with sudo. Uh, uh, 
What did it say before? No, I don't have that history anymore. Never mind. Maybe this will work. Uh, in the meantime, there were a couple of things I wanted to do. Oh, hey, that looks like progress. I wanted to do this stuff with our um, uh, database. The return one is not giving you confidence? Nah, nah, it's fine. I think it's checking a bunch of different things to figure out what's available in the environment. Okay, documentation. But we didn't get all this text before. Like, this is new. And new is good. So we're gonna make a new migration. Uh, another thing that I did, I think, was I made a new set of tasks for generating diesel migrations. So this would be like, um, add series and order to episodes and quite API. All right, now we have a new migration folder. And hey, look, it installed. There's no one zip. <laughs> so, apps, uh, install, unzip. Okay, we did it. We have an elixir. Do we have an extension for elixir? Uh, this is looking promising. Elixir support and debugger for VS Code with lots of uh, good average rating, lots of downloads. It's probably not a rootkit. <laughs> All right, um, so you use it on any of them? All right. So what you want to do, uh, let's see. So we want to uh, add a series ID in order to episodes. Yep. Copilot, write this migration for me, please. It's thinking. Come on, you know you want to do it. table uh, and column uh, series ID is not quite right so we do have a series table and I'm pretty sure that uh, primary key on series is a UUID like this we add multiple uh, yeah if we're gonna add that uh, series ID needs to be nullable have I seen the site P H I N D uh, I, I have not P, P H I N D Uh, I see, AI uh, answer engine, okay. Yeah. Oops, I was supposed to indent, there we go. Um, does this work? Only annoying thing is their message on every search 
thinking of creating an extension to remove it. Sure, sure. Uh, I'm not com completely convinced the syntax is right, but I think the idea of this is right. I don't know if I want to call it order, because then I'm going to have to escape it every time I use that in any SQL, should I want to manually write SQL. Uh, 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 we could call it, um, order index. Uh, we will allow the series ID to be null. Like if we have one off things, maybe they're not part of the series, strictly speaking. Order index, it will default to zero. Um, that will allow us to do this, even though we already have rows, because if it was not null and didn't have defaults, then it wouldn't, like, what would the value of those existing uh, rows be? Uh, was that all I wanted? We want to add a, uh, a foreign key. Yeah, so alter table, add constraint, FK, series. Is that the kind of the convention that I'm using Probably not, oh, I am naming them. No, no, I'm not. References series ID. Can you have a foreign key constraint like this if it's a nullable column? I guess we're gonna find out. So uh, the other thing I wanna do is I need to do the down migration. P, run task, uh, migration run inside a quit API. Uh, okay, we got a warning about collation, uh, ran the migration, uh, no errors. Okay, so that was the other thing I wanted to make sure that I did before I forgot since we're gonna need that for later. Uh, in PG admin, we should see now in episodes. Columns. So there's an order index and a series ID. If I rerun this query, here we go. Uh, of course, the numbers are wrong. Let's say this is one, and this is two, and this is three. And I like the idea that we'll just use numbers that correspond to the numbers in, in the title, like that. So it'll be one indexed. Uh, I guess if I rerun this query now, uh, hold on, it's not been saved, I see. How do I save? Save data changes. All right, now if I rerun this query, yeah, updated that, updates. So that all works. Now, I'm not convinced these, these values are right. I guess we'll find out once I kind of close the loop and, uh, get this exported and try to open it in DaVinci Resolve. Um, but I'm pretty sure this is wrong because shouldn't there be four episodes if there were three breaks? Yeah, so I think there's a bug there. We'll have to sort that out at some point. Uh, but first, let me go ahead. What did this change? Oh, good, good, good. All that updated. So we'll, we'll commit all this push directly to main because I'm lazy. Uh, and then we got six minutes left for the stream today. Let me uh, snooze ads a little bit. We'll buy ourselves a little bit of time. Um, how do we make, how do we make a file in Elixir? How do we, how do we do things? Okay, so let's make a folder. Um, I'll make this uh, our Twitch bot. This will be great. Uh, oh, right. So um, the thing I was going to do is go to issues, go to the terminal. 
sure, sure. Oh wait, this is a file. How did I accidentally create a file instead of a folder? What am I even doing? Uh, delete permanently, yes. Uh, mix new project name, interesting. Will that create a folder with that project name then, I'm assuming? Mix new, mox new, uh, Twitch bot. How about that? In the meantime, what I wanted to do, refresh this. We should see our issue for make a simple Twitch chat bot. So we'll start working on that. We'll create a folder. All right. No version is set for command mix. Okay. Cool. <laughs> what config file? <gasps> All right. Brainless is figuring out what I need to do. Um, so I don't know how much, let's see. What, what could we potentially do? in a few minutes. Uh, well, Brainless, oh, never mind. ASDF Global Erlang version, huh? ASDF Global Elixir version. Right, that makes sense. Um, ASDF. Global Maybe latest works? Let's find out. It it took it. Alright, it did make everything inside a Twitch bot. Uh bot. Uh Elixir version. <laughs> sure. Elixir. I mean I already did a thing, but uh, there we go. So, Erlang OTP 26, uh, Elixir 1.16.2. Compiled with Erlang OTP 26. Good times. All right, and now we have a folder, Twitchbot. And we have a formatter rules thing. Elixir LS will probably fail to launch. Um, extension settings. Hmm. Uh huh. Aha. Project DR. There we go. Uh, switch bot. Yeah. Well, I'm glad there is a setting for that. Um, one of the tools that, yeah, one of the one of the one of the tools that I was really wanting to use when I was working on some test stuff. This seems good. Uh, is a tool called Wallaby JS. Uh, I think I mentioned it on stream before. And they have a cool thing where if you're working on an open source project, you don't even need to pay for a license for it. Uh, and I'm working on an open source project. Unfortunately, if you're using a mono repo where like the front end app that you want to test is inside of a folder inside of the repo, it's not the top level thing, then um, it doesn't work. It says uh, it can't find open source repo that you're working on, so it gives up. So maybe they'll fix that, which would be good. Because I really enjoy that as a test runner inside of VS Code. But uh, So we have a lib, twitchbot.ex. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, then you could check out just that. I, yeah. That's an option.
worth thinking about. So we have a hello world. Um, so this is set up as a module. What if I want to like run that, like what if I want to have something that I can run from the command line? No, uh, no, I just, well, making this an API, do you mean the Twitch bot? I'm, I'm kind of imagining that it will interact with Redis. Gen server document, yeah, exactly, yeah, okay. That, that aligns. <laughs> okay, so what, what, what do I see here? We have a module called TwitchBot and it has at spec, hello. And so we have, so is this like an atom, a, I don't, I don't, I don't have the terminology for this language. But yeah, so you can run this and you get back this token. Yeah, at spec is the contract. Yep. So we return world. That's the contract. Hello world, return world. Uh, it defines the inputs and outputs of the function. Yep. So that that is that is a thing. And then we have some documentation showing that we could interactively run the method and we get world back. Try to change the return. All right, so. It doesn't immediately yell at me without saving. Uh, it does complain here. Invalid type specification. Yep. It's interesting that's only a warning. So if I change that back and then change it but don't save. Dialyzer, not a thing. Yeah, I mean, that's okay. I really like it when it, like a thing that I've disliked uh, doing Rust stuff, it's a compile check but not an error. I mean, if you don't comply with the contract, that, that sounds like an error to me. But that's one of the things I, I have grown used to, I guess with just with Wallaby, uh, doing like stuff with TypeScript uh, in VS Code is like immediate feedback on um, like feedback as you type and running, like having tests run. There's library, sure, for spec. Uh, the first thing this reminds me of is there's a thing for specifications also called spec in Clojure. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, okay. So, I guess next stream, <laughs> maybe next stream we can work on the Twitch bot. Uh, there's a bunch of things to do here, right? Because we need to be able to connect to Redis. We need to actually have a server. We need to have a, uh, a Docker file and run it inside a Docker. Uh, we need and then example is actually a unit test. Oh, and there's a test runner here as part of the extension. So we just run the test here. Do we see uh, test results in our testing? There we go. Cool. So that's all right. Yeah, we could, we could do it for the terminal, but why would you when you could do it here? Anyway, um, yeah, so we'll have to figure out how to do all the things. Talk to, uh, like, connect to the Twitch API, connect to Redis, run it all inside of Docker, have it listen for chat messages, maybe get it to respond, some of those things. I think we could probably do a bot that stores chat messages in Redis with a 24, 24 hour TTL um, and maybe have some like scripted things where it says, hey, hello, <laughs> gin server. Okay, let me uh, pull that up in a tab. I'll do some, some reading. Elixir, gin server, good. Gin server behavior, so we're talking about this thing. 
um, Gen X. Wait, wait, wait. That, that means something else. But Gen and something else is uh, it 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 pokes my brain in a certain place in terms of like Erlang stuff, which I have looked at, but it's been forever. Okay. So anyway, we're gonna wrap up the stream here, though.